Hi guys, my name is Joni and I run a blog called Free Taste Good and um, I had a retinal detachment. I had surgery, um, it's been nine days now. My surgery was on Tuesday the 25th of June. It's now the 4th of July. Um, the, the surgery was in my left eye and you can see that my retina um, is still much more enlarged than my right one. But I'm, I, I googled and went on YouTube and did a lot of research about um, retinal detachment surgeries and there are so many negative things on there so I wanted to get on and share my experience. Um, so in January I went for a regular eye exam. I needed new contacts. Um, I have my um, very very bad um, nearsighted or farsighted. I can see far but I can't see near yet yeah, nearsighted I can see near but not far so my myopia is a minus um, 5.75 so my vision is very very bad so I went to get my new prescription um, I went to the um, optician and he said that um, he did the eye exam but he did not dilate my eye which I have since found out that really to find the health of your eye they need to dilate your eye so he did not dilate my eye and I was telling him I was having some floaters I'm 51 years old and he was telling me that my eyes are very aged um, I was starting to get some cataracts he could tell um, but that was about all he said so I started I was noticing floaters and then I started noticing on the corner of my eye would be like a flicker of light and the first couple of times it happened, I would have to look um, because I thought like there was something coming and there was nothing there. Well, I have since found out since I went to the op ophthalmologist that those are the very early warning signs that your retina is starting to tear or to detach. So what happens is, is it starts to pull away that my ophthalmologist explained it like a piece of wallpaper. So as it starts to pull away from the eye, that's what's causing the flickering and the floaters. Um, and sometimes with the floaters, it would kind of be like a spider web. Like it would just like, it was just very bizarre the way it would happen. Well, I never did anything about it because I thought I just had an eye exam in January and they didn't say anything about, you know, there was any tears or there were anything. Well, on the Wednesday, I, um, I had been taking my contacts out every night and that particular night I was looking at my phone and somehow the pillow covered up my right eye and as it covered up my right eye I realized that my vision in the corner of my eye was gone so I could see this quadrant this quadrant this quadrant but this quadrant there was nothing so I stood up at the TV in our bedroom I covered this eye I had it on the Hallmark channel and I could see everything but the words Hallmark. So I um, messaged, I'm good friends with my physician, messaged my physician to say, hey, um, I lost vision in the, the corner of my eye. Well, the next morning I get a phone call. It's from the doctor that was on call for my doctor saying, I think you're having a stroke. You need to get to the emergency room. Well, I have high, high anxiety, so you can imagine to my surprise and how scared I was when I was told that they thought I was having a stroke. So I get to the emergency room, they tell me, I think this was on, so the 20, I think it was the 18th, so uh, June of eight, June 18th. So I get to the emergency room, they did my neurological testing, told me that um, I was intact, everything was good, um, but they thought um, I might have a retinal detachment. So they took me um, immediately and did an ultrasound of my eye and um, the resident told me first that he thought that it was the vitreous or the macula that was um, detached. And then later, the attending physician um, told me that it was um, the retina that was detached. So they made an appointment with the ophthalmologist. I had to be there at one o'clock. So I showed up at one o'clock um, to the ophthalmologist to get the exam done. Um, and they checked all the quadrants of my eyes and um, she held up fingers in all four quadrants and these three quadrants I could see but the one closest to my nose I could not see so when I got in to see the eye doctor the ophthalmologist he covered his face and he said no you can't see this side of my face can you and he was right I couldn't see that side of his face so he let me know that I had a retinal detachment but we did not know when it detached because for two weeks prior to that my vision had been really, really bad, and I, I was making comments like I thought there was something on my contact, 
But, I mean, who covers up their eye to see if you can see out of that eye? I mean, that's just not a normal thing. And when you have terrible vision to begin with, um, you're usually not doing that. So we weren't sure when it became detached. And so he said um, there were two windows. The one window is when you start seeing the flickering to get into the ophthalmologist and they can do the laser. The second one is if you're within the 24-hour period of it detaching, you want to have the surgery immediately but since <clears throat> we don't know when mine detached he said it was an urgent surgery so that we would wait so what he ended up doing so this was on a Thursday he scheduled my surgery for Tuesday so what Friday Saturday Sunday Monday so five days later he scheduled my surgery so I went in on June 25th to have the surgery done um, they had taken pictures of my eye and showed me the retinal tear and it didn't look like it had reached the macula yet which once it reaches the macula your prognosis for your vision is a lot worse um, of your vision coming back or you regaining very much of your vision. Um, so I had the surgery on the 25th. Few things I want to tell you about the surgery is, first of all, they give you the verse that you are awake when you have it done. Um, I must have fallen asleep through most of it, but I can tell you towards the very end, there was some pain. Like at first it just kind of felt like this, but then as he was taking the vitreous gel out, there was a lot more pressure. So at that point I did ask him if I could have some more of the Versed, which he gave me just to relax me a little bit more. Um, when I was done with the surgery, um, I did have pain in my eye. It wasn't like an unbearable pain, it was just a nagging pain. I asked for Tylenol right away, they gave it to me. Um, got released, was only in the, um, the recovery room probably for half an hour to an hour. Um, came home, and then you are in the face down position. And I am telling you, the face down position is the most important thing. So if you're told to be in the face down position, be in the face down position. That's your, your biggest thing for any of your eyesight coming back. If there's a chance of your eyesight coming back, seven days sounds like an awful long time. And I have severe, severe anxiety. And I can tell you I was having panic attacks during that time. My doctor had given me Xanax because all you're doing is you're staring at the floor the whole time. There is an apparatus, um, I can't think of the company's name, it was Comfort something where they send you in, so you lay in like this massage chair, you can sit in it or you can lay at night um, face down. Highly, highly <coughs> recommend it. It's one of the greatest things that's out there, but I can tell you those seven days are hard. First of all, the gas bubble is so large that all you can see is like when you're waving your hand, it's just like this big blob in front of your eyes. So it's scary. You get up to go to the restroom, your chin is on your chest. Um, I was told, you know, even to put a, a tissue or something down there so I knew that my, my head was down far enough. So the seven days is the most important thing. So I went for my first stop visit, took the patch off my eye. I only needed two eye drops because the pressure in my eye was fine. So I needed an antibiotic and the prednisone. Um, and then I needed to see the doctor the following week. So at that visit, the doctor checked my eye, said everything looked good, go home, be down in the face down position again. So you're in the face down position, um, it's hard to eat, you need straws to drink. Um, but when you get up to put the eye drops in your eye, I take a medicine at night. So I would take my medicine then because my head was already up. I will tell you, because you're laying flat, so you don't freak out like I do, or I did, you will become very lightheaded. So your, your, your movements need to be very deliberate and very slow, so your body has a chance to adjust to getting up. So you would sit up, I would get a little bit dizzy. Um, so I went on Monday, because today's the 4th of July, and normally anybody who has surgery on Monday would follow up the following Thursday with our, or on Tuesday would follow up the following Thursday. Well, today is the 4th of July, so my eye doctor saw me on Monday, my ophthalmologist. Um, my bubble, gas bubble, I would say at that point was probably halfway, I could see it halfway in the eye. He told me it's dissolving quicker than what he would want to, because they want that pressure to remain in your eye, the gas bubble pushing against the retina so it keeps it attached. But he did do the eye exam. He said um, that the retina was still attached, which was very good, because sometimes within two months it can detach again. So it was still intact. Um, he told me the seven full days of laying flat is the most important thing, and then there's a bonus three days. Um, so I am on bonus two days um, 
and this is a first time yesterday I got up for about an hour and then today I've been up for a couple hours just to kind of get myself acclimated again um, I can see above my gas bubble it's very blurry it's very distorted it's like things are kind of moving and how my doctor explained it is it's like when you get in a pool with goggles and water gets in the goggles and so you see that wavy movement that is what it feels like so I can still see the gas bubble it's towards the very bottom of my eye but your eye is flipped so what looks on the bottom it's really up on the top um, so I can still see the gas bubble down there if I close this eye like I can see myself I just saw myself pointing but it's extremely blurry nothing is clear um, and they said it can take up to a year before um, you can get your vision back um, you normally will form a cataract in the eye that you had the surgery in your other eye is much more prone to getting the detached retina so I just want to encourage you guys that that laying flat is I'm telling you it was some of the hardest stuff I had ever done and the anxiety that I felt I mean there was be days that I was crying because I'm like my back my neck hurt I can't do this but if it's for our vision to be able to see I was like yes I can do this so I just want to encourage you my vision like I said the bubble I can see above it if I cover my eye everything is still kind of cloudy but I can see things um, they said that um, at the three-week point will be a big point to tell where I am and then I will have a one a three a six and a 12 month um, follow-up visit to see where my vision is so my prayer is just that uh, my vision keeps getting better um, I haven't been able to drive yet because I'm only on day nine I'm okay with that um, so I just want to encourage you guys it is a scary thing I'm telling you and I am I'm a, pan, a walking panic attack so for me to be looking like I am right now is just an act of God because I am such a nervous and jerky person so I just wanted to get on because everything I read seemed to be pretty negative and so I wanted to tell you another side that um, it, although it is scary and you don't know what to expect it can be a ton worse and more than anything your posturing is the most important so if you're told to lay face down lay face down I was able to lay face down and since my surgery was on my left eye I could lay on the right side also but I did almost all face down um, so again I just wanted to encourage all you guys um, I go for my next visit on Monday to see how the healing is um, I'll probably do another video at that point too but I just wanted to encourage all you guys and let you know that um, it is bad but um, Hopefully my video will be a little bit more uplifting than some of the videos that I found. Not that people don't have t horrible experiences because I know that they do, but it's so humanistic of us that to put all the bad things out there and not the good things. So I wanted to come on and tell you, even though it is scary and it's very, very hard, it, you know, the outcomes can be totally different too. So I'm hoping my outcome's good, but I'll be back on in a week or so and let you guys know how my recovery's going. So hope you guys are all having a good day. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate. Subscribe to my um, Free Taste Good and hopefully um, we'll be able to help each other through this. Talk to you guys later. Bye.